What 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 What's up everybody? Um sorry I haven't gotten a uh, video off about fish in a while. Uh I've been working on the fish room a lot and uh helping my dad set up a uh fifty six gallon tank. But uh I'm back and uh I'm just gonna talk about some of the tanks and some of the uh fish that I've been working on for the past like what see the fish on the far left tank over here are about 200, 216, 236, somewhere around there. Uh, they're days old. Um, tank in the middle are some pelvochromus pulcher or uh, crib fish, or cribs as they're most commonly called. And on the far right is a tank I set up from, for some fish that are coming in soon. Um, the fish are grandma, like Marcy or Vahita. They're kind of a cross between since we've had a lot of it, uh, a lot of uh, inbreeding mishaps in the past, uh, the past maybe hundred years when people really started importing them. So over here we've got some Pistagramma cockatoides fry. They they've had about their they've had their uh, fin extensions and their sexual dysmorphism for I don't know maybe fifty. 60 days, uh, I still got a, a while to go until they get uh, to breeding size, but uh, they're coming along. This tank's just got a regular sponge filter in there. It's actually rated for, I think, 80 gallons or 125 gallons. Uh, yeah, I think that's the one for 80 gallons. Um, and then right behind right behind me is the one for 125 in my 33 long just remember um, especially when you're doing breeding fish um, if you have a tank and you you're gonna have a lot of fish in it especially like these got like I don't know maybe 70 80 fry in the tank and they're all about an inch long you definitely want to make sure that uh, your, your filter is oh, way overpowered this one takes about I don't know, maybe one eighth of the tank, uh, maybe one sixth, probably. Um, it's really, really. This is a 10 gallon tank and it's rated for 80 gallons, so it's eight times the amount of filtration that it's recommended for, and you don't have to change it, uh, at least not that often. Maybe as much as you change a hamburger filter, uh, which are wall filters, and maybe once, once every. Uh, six months, something like that, depending on how many water changes you do, how many fish you've got in the tank and stuff. This tank, you can't really see anything. And this, uh, it's definitely black water, as you can see. Uh, there are a, there is a, uh, about a two inch layer of, uh, sphagnum peat moss in there. And uh, two pieces, two very large pieces of driftwood that are about the same length as a tank uh, in there. That's probably what, what gives it the uh, very, very dark reddish orange uh, tint to the water. But uh, it's uh, it's really just there to give a home to some female cribs that I've gotten. Uh, the, there used to be, or actually, I bought about ten, eight or ten of them as fry. About the but it's smaller than these guys over here, and I've been growing them since since they were babies. Uh, if you look at a video, I think it's called Overview of My 29 Gallon Tank. It's way way back um, in my earlier videos. Definitely, you can see them uh, as right right when I got them. Yeah, that was a while back, and they've grown full size. They're breeders, or I haven't bred them, but they. I haven't bred them, but they are the size of breeding, and I've got a pair upstairs that form together, and these are all the females that got left over. The uh, batch of ten only ended up having two males and eight females, so obviously some of them aren't going to pair up, and one of the males died when he was growing up, so 
I only have one one pair of these guys, and they haven't been breeding. So I put them in my uh, the 29 gallon upstairs, your community tank. Just uh, let them live out their lives. Uh, and then finally, this tank over here. Let me move the camera. Is just a tank, like I said, set it up for. So I'm a Pistogramma McMarsty slash Vahita. Um, they're more Vahita than they are McMarsty, but they're definitely a cross between them. But uh, for them, and just got them set up. Just waiting for those guys to come in. There should be a uh, female red tuxedo guppy in here somewhere behind the uh, sponge filter. Let's see if I can zoom in on her. Yeah, you can kind of see her tail over there, top left corner. But, uh, yeah, this tank has just got a whole bunch of caves. Uh, definitely one thing I'll talk about uh, later in one of my Epistogram video, uh, breeding videos is that when you're setting up a small breeding tank, especially one that is, uh, like very, very small, like this one's only a 10 gallon tank, which is 20 inches long, 12 inches, uh, 12 inches wide and I think 11 inches tall or 12 inches tall and 11 inches wide I'm not entirely sure about that but uh these tanks you definitely want to have a lot of uh, filtration in these and a lot of caves especially for epistogrammas uh, pelvochromis um I think what am I thinking of? Pike cichlids. Obviously, you're not going to be breeding pike cichlids in a 10 gallon tank, but they, most of them are uh, cave breeders. And uh, sometimes you'll get a pair of, uh, what do you think I have? Oh, uh, German blue rams or Bolivian rams that breed in a cave. Obviously, they're not going to breed on the walls of the cave, but they're going to breed inside of the cave on the substrate. Um, just definitely the most, most safest, uh, safer alternative to breeding outside on a rock, obviously, um, which most of them do. But, uh, so yeah, I've got a cave in the back right, uh, a cave to the left of that, a cave to, um, to the right of that, and a cave to the up, up front. Um, you definitely want to give them a variety of caves. Like in the back, you can see it's a pot with the, uh, with a small notch broken into it. Uh, the one to the left of that is just, uh, a cactus, uh, cactus plant tray, uh, and another one broken in half sitting on top of that. Um, the one to th right there is two, actually that's one cactus pot, it's a lot bigger than the, uh, the first two, uh, it's just shattered into a bunch of pieces and then piled onto each other, it's got maybe one or two openings in there, and, uh, a cave on top of it, a cave next to it, and it just gives them a lot more, uh, random, ra more randomized, uh, feature like they would have in nature, as close as I could get to some driftwood, because... I don't have any driftwood um, ready for these tanks. I could move somebody, somebody else's driftwood, but I don't feel like uh, doing that. Uh, and then up here is two large cactus pots, broken in half, set on top of each other. And definitely, it's the biggest opening. But um, you never know. Certain some pairs like some caves, some pairs like some caves. Um, some of the have bred in the open. I mean, not in the complete open, but you know, crevice of a driftwood. Uh, but most of them prefer a cave with one opening or two openings that it's very easy to guard. And uh, the male can just barely get in, if at all. As they, if they don't get in, they can still breed, and it's not that big of a problem. Uh, and then finally, over here, this uh, is 2.5 gallon tank which is just, uh, the substrate is purely eco-complete and just growing out to uh, Amazon sword plantlets that I got off of my, uh, my dad's uh, Belhiri, I think, or Amazonicus. Uh, one of those. He's got a few of them in there. And, uh, this tank just has, I think, if it has anything in it, it's got a a male tuxedo guppy. I don't really, don't really pay attention to the tank. I'm about to tear it down. Then uh, turning 180 over here, you've got this 20 long tank. It uh, 
I uh, used to have a breeding, or uh, yeah, a breeding pair of what am I thinking of? Dwarf Goramis. Uh, obviously now it doesn't, but uh, mm, that's where the substrate's coming from. It's a uh, fluorite, uh, red gravel, and right now it's just housing a whole bunch of different uh, Pistogramma fry uh, from various different females and uh, about to re restart that because it's really messy and uh, got us some uh, dead fish in there we got to find and take out and then finally over here the 33 gallon long uh, this tank has been uh, my, my breeding my breeder's tank, I should say, uh, for maybe five, six months. Uh, a lot of, lot of breeding went on this tank. Uh, three, two or three females in here, original breeders. There, are two, two of them are still in here. Um, older videos, of Histrioma cockatoides, way back then. And they were breeding in a ten gallon the first their first spawns. Uh let's see, uh male the male original male that was breeding with these guys, he died maybe a week ago, a week two two weeks ago. Uh he was the father of all of my Pistogramma Kakatoides fry that I have currently, so obviously I've gotta wait till I get a new breeder. Uh, I've got a guy upstairs that's getting close to him breeding size, just gotta catch him and move him downstairs in a community he's in a community tank upstairs right now. Uh yeah, let's see if I can find one of these females. There's one. Uh so yeah. This tank was recently moved. For any of you who've seen it before, uh it used to be in the main part of the basement, now it's in this fish room. Uh so during the move, the females got really mixed up and confused, uh, their breeding cycle got knocked off, and as a result of the confusion, they uh, kind of forgot whose fry is who, so they'll randomly guard uh, a group of fry and randomly uh, ward off some others. Uh, just nobody knows. I, I can tell whose fry is who, because uh, the first female that bred uh, their, her fry are a lot bigger, or this will happen with a lot of them. Some females' of fry will be a lot bigger, fa uh, they'll be bigger, faster, and they won't have as many. So maybe they'll have 50 fry, but they'll get to an inch in three weeks. And some of them will have uh, 100, 120 fry, but they'll take three months to get to an inch. Um, fish are all, or females are all different with how they spawn, and, uh, what their fry are like, but uh, most of the fry in here are about an inch. Uh, there's still some that are maybe a centimeter, a uh, centimeter and a half, but uh, everybody's gotten pretty big. Uh, this tank is also an example of a lot of caves. Uh, the, the white rock you see in the left is a cave, it's covered by dr or it's uh, surrounded by driftwood, which they use for breeding. Got a cave in the corner. Cave over here in the corner, uh, cave in the middle, shattered clay pots, uh, driftwood, sphagnum moss. Uh, this sponge filter in the middle is rated for 125, like I said, over filtering, and uh, some oak leaves scattered around the tank. So, uh, a lot more space, a lot more caves, obviously. But, uh, yeah. So, this is the fish room. Uh, I'll make sure to get some more videos out for these guys and uh, finish with uh, some Mr. Gamma Fry.